Right now on News 3, a planned schedule change for next year affecting start times at dozens of Madison schools. The president approves the state's federal disaster declaration, what this means for those affected by this summer's flooding. And a local woman says she was attacked after a car accident. We'll break down what happened straight ahead. This is News 3 at 6. Thanks for joining us tonight. After two years of planning, the Madison Area School District moving forward to change school times. While all middle schools involved in the plan will move to a later start time, some elementary schools will start later and some earlier. It's all in an effort to accommodate better sleep schedules based on adolescent ages and needs and to accommodate bus routes. Jamie Perez joins us in the studio with more details on the changes to come. Jamie? So the school board behind all of this has done a lot of research and, the, and planning and they say they're taking the time to make sure that they do this right. With the changing start times, that means the time that students get out of school will also change, meaning that everything in between will need to adjust as well. The biggest focus of the time changes is to allow middle school students to have later start times. They say based on research, kids sleep cycles and needs change as they age and need more sleep. So the plan hopes to accommodate some of those needs. And when this plan goes into effect, all the 7.30 a.m. start time middle schools will be shifted to an 8.40 a.m. start time. Some of the late start elementary schools will shift to an earlier start time to make room for middle school bus routes. You might have elementary parents that say, well, we don't want to change it. The time works really really good for us and then middle school parents will say no you, you just wait till your children become middle schoolers and they can't get up and they're tired all the time so this is really good for all kids by the 2021 to 2022 school year, all of the schools involved in this plan, that means elementary and middle schools, will have implemented these time changes. Now, to find out how your child's school is affected, you can find a link to our website on our website at channel3000.com. Jamie, thank you very much. Continuing coverage now of the disappearance of Barron County 13-year-old Jamie Kloss. Today was the fourth day of the search. The Barron County Sheriff's Office this afternoon gathered together 100 community volunteers to scour the area for pieces of evidence that can provide clues about the missing girl or the deaths of her parents. They were found shot to death in their home early Monday. Jamie has been missing ever since and is believed to be in danger. More than 400 tips have come in from around the country since the investigation started earlier this week. President Trump has approved Wisconsin's flooding disaster declaration and has ordered federal assistance to help in the state and local recovery efforts. It's in response to the historic flooding and storms from August and September. Federal funding is now available to affected individuals in several counties, including Dane and Sauk counties. Assistance can include grants for temporary housing and home repairs, low-cost loans to cover uninsured property losses, and other programs to help individuals and business owners recover from the effects of the disaster. To weather now, here's a live look from our Edgewater Sky Cam. It was another nice fall day, and there are more on the way. Here's Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti with your first alert forecast. Gary? Well, Charlotte, we'll see another mild day tomorrow, although there will be some shower chances in the morning. That will turn cooler for the weekend. Let's start out by taking a look at visible cloud tracking and hardly see a cloud anywhere around Wisconsin. This morning, though, because of the clear skies, the dry air and the light winds, temperatures dropped off pretty rapidly. Here in Madison, we we're down to 27. Many locations were in the 20s. Black River Falls was as cold as 18 degrees, but their high temperature climbed up to 64 degrees, so a big temperature rise out west. Temperatures mainly in the 50s, upper 50s, through the Madison area, perhaps a couple degrees cooler closer to Lake Michigan. Current temperatures now are in the middle 50s with a couple of 60s out near the Mississippi River. By tomorrow morning, look for a chance of showers. Temperatures will, climb, will drop into the middle 40s by tomorrow morning. Then tomorrow uh, after the showers end, probably see a little clearing later in the afternoon. It'll be breezy with a high temperature of 57. That's your first alert forecast. Thanks, Gary. Law enforcement is encouraging drivers who are in crashes to remain in their vehicles until help arrives. And this comes after a woman says she was attacked by a man following a car accident on Sunday. Our Keely Arthur has a breakdown of what happened in Iowa County. This time of year, there's a lot more deer, meaning more hazards on the road. There's going to be a lot more accidents. We all know we don't want that to happen, but Dodgeville Police Chief David Bauer says many people don't know what to do when it does. You know, what law enforcement needs from them or what they expect from them. An incident Sunday morning is shedding light on what you should do. According to the Iowa County Sheriff's Office, a woman hit a deer, disabling her vehicle on Highway 151 in Dodgeville. While waiting for authorities to arrive, a dark-colored Impala drove up. A man wearing a camouflage shirt got out, asked her if she hit the deer, then allegedly grabbed her. 
The woman says she was able to slam the door, locking herself inside. While the situation is rare, Bauer says if someone does come up to you following a crash, you can stay in your vehicle and let them know authorities are on the way. And if they had ill intent, they would be hopefully, you know, uh, scared off by the fact that law enforcement's on its way. Ideally, if your car works, drive to a well-lit location and wait for law enforcement there. If you can remove yourself from the area or make yourself into a safer area, that's our obviously our first choice. If you aren't able to leave the scene, stay in your car, roll up your windows, lock your car doors, and turn on your hazards. Important information as the year starts to wind down and road dangers pick up. There's going to be a lot more deer on the road and the, the snow will be flying soon and we need to slow down and, and just be, be as safe as we can. In Dodgeville, Keely Arthur, WISC News 3. We spoke with the Iowa County Sheriff's Office today. They say they have not had any further contact with the alleged victims, nor victim, nor any updates. The sequel to the popular Making a Murderer documentary series is set to premiere tomorrow on Netflix. The first series recounted the story of Stephen Avery and his nephew, Brendan Dassey, who were convicted in the 2005 slaying of Wisconsin photographer Teresa Halbach. The two are serving life sentences. Avery insists police framed him. Dassey has argued that detectives coerced him into confessing. The sequel, Making a Murderer 2, will follow their appeals. Foxconn teaming up with UW-Madison holding a two-day technology showcase and career fair. It is today and tomorrow at UW's Engineering Hall. The partnership will help students by offering internships, research projects, and jobs with Foxconn. In August, the tech giant announced it will invest $100 million in innovation and research at the university. Candidates for governor will go face to face tomorrow in their first debate ahead of next month's election. You can watch the debate between incumbent Scott Walker and challenger Tony Evers right here on Channel 3. Starts tomorrow night at 8. Our political reporter Jessica Arp will be part of the panel in the debate, sponsored by the Wisconsin Broadcasters Association. The second portion of the Great Sauk State Trail is set to open next week. Next Friday, October 26th, former Governor Tommy Thompson and representatives from the Ho-Chunk Nation will attend the ribbon-cutting ceremony. The second phase of the trail will provide access to the new Sauk Prairie Recreation Area. The ceremony, which is open to the public, will start at 2 p.m. at the former property of the Badger Army Ammunition Plant. Well, if you're feeling lucky, you might want to stop at the gas station to pick up a lottery ticket. No one won the Powerball jackpot last night, and that means the pot is up to $430 million for Saturday's drawing. Then tomorrow night, Mega Millions will draw numbers for the second largest jackpot in that game's history. That prize is at $900 million. Still ahead tonight, your updated forecast, including what we can expect for this weekend. But first, turning to the public for funding, an update on a downtown Janesville project. That's next at 6.
The Janesville residents will have an opportunity to contribute to downtown development. But it will require them to dig into their pockets a bit. Rock County reporter Adam Duxter explains why those from forward Janesville are now looking to the public for funding. Now workers are still putting the final touches on Janesville's new town square, but today city leaders and local influencers were introduced to a way that everyone can get involved in projects like this. The Town Square and Festival Street in downtown Janesville are the result of years of ideas, planning, and of course, funding. For groups like Arise and Forward Janesville, it's easy to get excited about these changes. There is so much going on at downtown Janesville. It's just a really neat place to be and to explore. There's river walks, there's connecting areas, there's river lawns, just a really neat sense of community. Projects like the Town Square have relied on private donations for funding. At a lunch today, Forward Janesville announced they've raised nearly $5 million so far. Now, they're giving the public the chance to contribute as well. The community campaign is really about that. It's about the community. The campaign isn't about one benefactor or two benefactors that are supporting it. It's really about 66,000 benefactors. So it's every person that represents Janesville to support what's happening in our community. Burden says the goal is to raise $1.5 million in public funding, which would help finish the Performing Arts Center and provide extra lighting. Every dollar counts no matter if it's $50 or $50,000. The city of Janesville says getting private support on projects like this helps make it a stronger city. These announcements really, they give me goosebumps. These are things that, you know, the city and tax dollars really can't support, but we love to see them come in and just supplement all of the foundation of the things we're doing. Well, the Town Square project is scheduled to open next week, but it's not the last development to come. Those of Forward Janesville say there still are more pieces to this project to continue developing the city's core. In Janesville, Adam Duxter, WISC News 3. The Center for Suicide Awareness is celebrating the 100 lives they've helped save through a text line as they hit their four-year anniversary. Hope Line is a 24-7 emotional support crisis number for anyone who might be having suicidal thoughts or even just going through a difficult time. Jamie Perez spoke with a Marine Corps veteran who says the text line helped save his life. He now works at the center to help save others. Whether you're 10 years old or 60 years old or a veteran or, you know, LGBTQ or whatnot, we've gotten a myriad of different ages, races, populations to text in and say, I need help. If you or someone you know needs help, you can text HOPELINE at 741-741 for support. You can see Jamie's full story coming up later tonight on News 3 at 10. And still ahead at 6, the Brewers back in Milwaukee. Now we'll have a preview of tomorrow's Game 6. And what can we expect for this weekend's Badger game against Illinois? That's ahead in sports. And in weather, look for chilly weather to return for the weekend. Tomorrow will still be mild. There will be a chance of a shower in the morning, but the cooler weather will be here by Saturday. I'll have your first alert forecast in a few minutes.
Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti joining us now. A pretty day out there, not too bad, actually. Yeah, we started out cool, but with the dry air, the temperatures warmed up pretty quickly. But the National Weather Service has just issued their long range outlooks for not only the month of November, but for the upcoming winter. Okay, we cover do our tell. eyes and ears. <laughs> yeah, so let, well, well, we'll see. Yeah, first of all, in the short term, things are going to stay on the cool side. 57 for high tomorrow. It's pretty close to average, but the weekend will be chilly. 44 for high on Saturday, and that'll be pretty much the steady temperature through the day. Sunday will be up to 48 after starting out in the mid 20s in the morning, but it will be breezy. So both days will feel pretty chilly Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday temperatures low to mid 50s and then on Thursday uh, lower 50s, but there'll be some chances for showers toward the end of next week. Now the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook from October 26 through November 1st calling for below normal temperatures for much of the eastern part of the country. Highest probabilities from southern Wisconsin southward about a 50% chance of that warmer than normal weather expected out west. Precipitation expected to be above normal at the highest percentage probabilities uh, along the east coast, but we're still looking at about a 40 to 45 percent chance of above normal precipitation for the very end of October. Now, the month of November, uh, looking for above normal temperatures almost from coast to coast with the highest probabilities in the western portion of the nation and also up in uh, the northern portions of New England. As far as precipitation, equal chances of above or below normal precipitation through much of the country. There's a signal for uh, better chances of above normal precipitation through the southern and eastern portions of the country, maybe drier than normal in the Pacific Northwest. And then the outlook for December, January, and February just released today calling for above normal temperatures for much of the western and northern portions of the country, equal chances for above or below normal temperatures in the southeast. As far as precipitation, again, the chances favor the southern and eastern portions of the country for above normal precipitation, a little better chance for below normal precipitation from Wisconsin Wisconsin eastward and also uh, centered over Montana. So this is with a very typical El Nino weather pattern and we are expecting a weak El Nino weather pattern through the upcoming winter. Live view from the Queen Bee Radio Skycam in Platteville, the sun just dipped below the horizon in the last couple of minutes. The WISC Skycam showing clear skies looking out to the east of the station and the Edgewater Skycam in downtown Madison showing clear skies over downtown Madison. High temperature today made it up to 58 degrees, but that was after we started out at 27 this morning. So about a 30 degree temperature climb right now we're at 56 winds out of the south southwest at seven miles per hour low temperatures this morning 20s across much of the state lacrosse uh, and milwaukee were right around the 30 degree mark some places were in the upper teens especially in far north central wisconsin current temperatures are in the 50s to around 60 degrees so those temperatures have come up quite a bit that's because the mild pacific air is coming in on a west to east jet stream here to the south more moisture continuing to pound parts of texas and oklahoma with showers and thunderstorms they don't need any more rain there and on Unfortunately, the weather pattern is such that it's going to continue raining down there while we stay relatively quiet with just weak weather systems bringing us some light uh, precipitation when it does fall. Temperatures in the 50s here out to the west. Temperatures still in the 70s. We're not going to get quite that warm, but we'll probably still stay in the 70s or the uh, 50s for tomorrow. 43 for the overnight low temperature. Clear skies will turn cloudy by morning with a slight chance of a shower toward early tomorrow morning. Tomorrow's high at 57 with a rain chance in the morning and maybe some sunshine and breezy conditions in the afternoon. Future track quiet this evening. Then clouds move in late tonight. Tomorrow we could see a couple of showers in the morning. Those will clear out, maybe some clearing late in the day. Quiet for tomorrow night, but on Saturday as a cold front comes through, a few rain showers could mix with a few flakes of snow before ending. Temperatures staying in the low to mid 40s all day on Saturday. As far as rainfall amounts, very, very light ex uh, precipitation expected. 7 to 10 day forecast though. Temperatures remain on the cool side for the weekend. Back in the 50s for much of next week. Some rain chances toward the end of the week. The Badger men's basketball team takes the floor Sunday and Greg Gard explains why the rear view mirror in your car is so small. The story is coming up in sports. Hi, I'm Michelle Carolla. Tonight on the News at 9, it's fashion that's taking a stand. Tonight, watch dozens of models walk the runway showing support and raising awareness for domestic violence. It's first on Fox at 9.
The National League Championship Series takes the day off. Game six is tomorrow at Miller Park with first pitch at 7.39 p.m. The Dodgers will start left-hander Hyun Jin Ryu and the Brewers. Well, Wade Miley gets the call. Wait, didn't Wade Miley start yesterday's game five in Los Angeles? Well, he sure did. He faced one batter then was taken out. But Craig Council says that's part of the plan to set things up for the weekend. We've got Wade and Ulysse lined up to, to, to begin the games. Um, and, um, you know, I guess Ulysse could be involved in game six if we need him. But uh, we, we've got, you know, two starters lined up and we've got a bullpen that's, um, you know, going to get a day off and, our, and some of our key guys are going to get multiple days off and be ready to go into a, a, a two-game stretch where we can, you know, we can use them. So we're, we're in a good spot. Here's a schedule at Miller Park. Game six tomorrow night, 7.39 Central Time. If the Brewers win tomorrow, the deciding game seven will start at 8.09 p.m. Saturday night in Milwaukee. We'll get our first look at the Badger men's basketball team in action this Sunday afternoon at the annual red and white scrimmage at 3.30 at the Kohl Center. For the first time in two decades, the answers about questions not making the NCAA tournament, well, they haven't had to do that for that long. The good news, the injuries from last year are a whole lot better. Demetri Trice and Kobe King ready to go. Brad Davison just about all the way back from shoulder surgery. And all that in another year with Ethan Happ and Madison should mean that talk about not making the tournament is in the past. We have a lot to prove this year. You know, like I said, we've said before, um, you know, missing the tournament, being the first team to do that, gives us an extra fuel that a lot of teams in the Wisconsin program haven't had. And there's a reason why your rear view mirror is about 4% of what your windshield is. You look back, you glance, you don't gaze. You have to focus on what's in front of you. You learn from the past, you grow from those experiences, you apply them as you take steps forward, and then you got to focus on moving forward. The Badger football team is a 10-point favorite against Illinois for homecoming at Camp Randall Saturday morning at 11. Wisconsin coming off its second loss of the season as Paul Chris's team tries to move on from its 38-13 loss at Michigan last Saturday. The Badgers bounced back pretty well from their earlier loss to BYU, so you have to figure they know the routine to get back on track against the Fighting Illini Saturday. That's what's awesome about sports is the response. Is, is, those are the lessons. That's the takeaways. And, and I have liked the way the guys have responded this week and, and now we get to go out and, and play and when you play you still have to execute and you still have to make plays um, regardless of whether what happened before and have you seen illinois coach lovey smith lately well this was lovey last year the week of the wisconsin game in mid-october but now this is what lovey smith looks like Whoa, he grew the beard when he was in training camp mode to get ready for the grind of the season, but he's kept it. We got grand him too. Some suggest Lovey's aged 20 years in his two seasons at Illinois head coach. Others suggest his beard makes him look like Santa Claus or Uncle Drew. <laughs> Maybe when he gets his deer, he'll shave it off or something. I don't know. Coach of the Bears can make gray, I was going to say, right? yeah, after, after being the Bears coach for that length of time. That'll make you gray. Yeah. Well, uh, around here, that beard might help you keep you a mile, or keep you, keep you warm, and it may, uh, may come in handy not too far down the road. 56 right now, very comfortable compared to 24 hours ago. Our temperature is up about 10 degrees, but tomorrow look for a high of 57, some showers in the morning, and then cooler for the weekend. That 44 high on Saturday in the morning with temperatures holding steady and maybe even a couple of flurries of snow mixed in north of Madison. Look for temperatures to stay chilly for Sunday. Be generally in the 50s for next week with some rain chances toward the end of the week. Maybe mixing with a little snow by uh, Saturday night, Sunday morning of the following weekend too. All right, Gary, thank you. Thanks for joining us for News 3 at 6. Enjoy your evening and we'll see you back here at 10. Download the new Channel 3000 app and get alerted on your mobile device the minute news breaks. Wherever you go, be the first to know with Channel 3000.